Okay. Uh, when we talk of a LP function, we really mean that we are talking of a representative from an equivalence class. Throughout any computation, we will of course work with the same representative and there will be no discrepancy. So, we generally talk of a function, not of an equivalence class, though LP uh, elements are really equivalence classes. So, in this spirit, when you say an LP function is continuous, that means in that equivalence class, there is a representative which is continuous. So, if you take an arbitrary element, it will be equal almost everywhere to a continuous function in that equivalence class. Okay, so, this is in that spirit, we have the following theorem. So, let i contained in R be an open interval let u belong to w 1 p of i 1 less or equal to p less or equal to infinity then u is absolutely continuous. Okay, proof. So, let x naught in i, so you choose a point, a reference point. So, if u belongs to w 1 p of i, then u dash belongs to l p of i. So, it is integrable on any finite interval because LP are locally integrable therefore it is integrable on any finite. So, thus u bar of x which is defined in the following way. So, this is the definition integral x naught to x of u dash t dt is an absolutely continuous function. In fact, that is one of the definitions of absolute continuous functions. You can have an epsilon delta version also, but an absolutely continuous function is one which can be written as an indefinite integral of an integrable function and uh, in fact, that uh, integrand will be the derivative almost everywhere for the given function. Absolutely continuous functions are differentiable almost everywhere in the classical sense and we also saw before uh, that for them the distribution and the um, uh, classical derivatives coincide. So, we have already seen that. Okay. So, it is uh, absolutely continuous function and its derivative distribution as well as classical is u dash. So, u minus u bar dash equal to 0 and this implies that u minus u bar must be a constant and therefore, u equal to u bar plus c almost everywhere of course, almost everywhere and therefore, this implies that u is absolutely continuous. Okay. So, now now assume that i is a bounded interval say a b. or rather let us say without loss of generality some bounded interval. So, we will take the prototype of that 0 1. So, u is so u extent being absolutely continuous is uniformly continuous and this implies extends uniquely to the closed interval 0 1 and you can write u of x equals u 0 plus integral 0 to x u dash t 
dt for all x in i. So let you let us assume that one is less than p less than infinity. So mod u zero is less than or equal to mod u x, and I want to estimate this integral. I am going to use uh, Helder's inequality. So plus mod u dash in L p so zero p i that is the L p norm of u dash into uh, mod x power 1 by p dash which is uh, p 1 by p plus 1 by p dash equal to 1. Okay. So, this is the Helder inequality and applying the triangle inequality to the two functions namely u x is one function and u this is a constant function and uh, so, uh, of course, this can be less than mod u x plus mod u dash 0 p i because mod x is less than 1. Okay, so, now we apply it to a constant function and this and to this constant function. So, if you get you will get by the triangle inequality the L p norm of the constant function is the constant itself less than or equal to you have mod u 0 p i plus again this is a we want to take the L p norm of uh, uh, this. So, you can mod u dash 0 p i. And that of course, we know is less than or equal to some constant times uh, norm u 1 p i, which is defined in terms of the pth powers of this. But as I told you, the sum of the norms is an equivalent norm and therefore, you can write it in terms of this. So, so c depends only on p. Again, you have mod u x is less than or equal to mod u 0 plus mod u dash 0 p i and therefore, that is again less than or equal to c times norm u 1 p i. The c may be whenever I write c in various inequalities they are not necessarily the same real number, but some generic constant that is all we mean. Okay. So, it is independent of the variables which we have. Okay. So, for all x in i bar. Okay. So, we have proved we have that. So, this implies that w 1 p of i is continuously embedded in c of i bar. Namely, every function is absolutely continuous therefore, continuous and the norm in uh, here namely the L infinity norm, norm u infinity you have norm u infinity is less than equal to c times norm u 1 p n. This is what we have shown because for u 0 and for every other u x we have shown this. Okay. So, you have this. In addition, we have u x minus u y for x y in i you have u x minus u y is equal to integral x to y u dash t dt and again by Helder inequality you have u x minus u y is less than or equal to mod u dash uh, 0 p i into mod x minus y to the power of 1 over p dash. Okay. So, that is equal to mod u 1 p i times mod x minus y to the 1 by p dash because the L p norm of the first derivative is nothing but the mod 1 norm. Okay. So, this means that u is Helder continuous with exponent 1 over p dash. Okay. Now, if b equals closed unit ball in uh, w 1 p i, then b is uniformly bounded 
in C of i bar. So call this star by star B is equicontinuous. So by Ascolias the image of B B is relatively compact. in C of I bar. That is the inclusion map from W1 P of I to C of I bar inclusion map is a compact operator. That means it takes a bounded set to a relatively compact set. That is a definition of a compact operator and that is very important topic in functional analysis. Okay. So, these are the properties in case of W1 P of i and which we will serve to us to as a guide to what to study in this chapter. So, following is the roadmap of what we are going to do. So, first we will study approximation theorems. Many results are easily to easy to prove for smooth functions using calculus techniques and then complete it with a density argument uh, for uh, less smooth functions. Okay. Therefore, we would like to study when we can approximate WMPI, W1, uh, WMP omega, W1P omega by smooth functions. So, approximation by smooth functions. Then two extension theorems. Many results are easy to prove in Rn where you have no boundary, so you have plenty of elbow room, you can do what you like. Just as we saw uh, W1P0 of Rn is same as W1P of Rn, we just use convolution and we could use cutoff functions and so on. So, convolution is a very important uh, approximation technique and uh, uh, especially if you want approximation by smooth functions and for that you need to work in Rn. So, if you want to prove a result in omega, we use one method is to extend the function to Rn and then prove the result in Rn and try to restrict it to omega. Okay, so, this is the uh, sta standard method and uh, so, for this you need that the extension which you give is continuous in the sense that W1P of R omega to W1P of Rn we want a extension operator P which is continuous linear and P restricted to uh, sorry P of u restricted to omega will be u itself. Okay. So, then this is called an extension operator and uh, such operators are useful because as it said we can prove results in Rn and then we try to prove this. Then inclusion theorems. So, we saw that W1P of i is continuously embedded in C of i bar. Okay. So, we would like to know in general if we have some uh, W1P of omega is it included in some uh, other well known space. Okay, it may not be always uh, spaces of continuous functions for that you may have to go to very high order Sobolev spaces WMP where M is very large, but you may be able to do so in other Lebesgue spaces better integrability properties and so on. So, that will be the idea. So, WMP of omega will be included in some either LQ 
of omega of some q or it will be in c uh, alpha uh, cm alpha or oh, sorry ck alpha of omega bar which means uh, differentiable k times and held a continuous exponent is alpha and so on. So, such uh, kind of results we will try to prove in the inclusion theorem. Then compactness theorems. So, we uh, saw that this inclusion w1 pi in c of i bar was compact. So, we have uh, investigate compactness of the preceding inclusion operators. And compactness is very important because once you have compactness then you have sequences with convergent subsequences and so on and therefore especially in the study of PDEs, non-linear PDEs and eigenvalue problems this will be a very useful idea to have. So, find the trace theory. So, I said that uh, the uh, Sobolev spaces form a natural uh, uh, function analytic framework to look at solutions of partial differential equations. Now, most PDEs come as boundary value problems. So, if you have omega bounded domain, you will have uh, a certain L of u equal to f in omega and u or du by d nu such thing will be prescribed on the boundary. Okay, so, we want to know. Now, if in the case of C of i bar, then uh, the function extends naturally to the endpoints, and so the value of u at the end point is well defined. But if you have an LP function in general, uh, because the measure of the boundary is, of, is uh, boundary is uh, 0, the boundary is of measure 0 and therefore, and the LP functions are only defined almost everywhere. So, it is not realistic, it is absurd to talk of the value of u on the boundary for a LP function. So, it is not possible, but on the other hand we are making we have to make use of the fact that we are just do not have any arbitrary LP function. We have LP functions whose distribution derivatives up to some order are also LP functions. So, we have to exploit that no extra knowledge and then somehow give a meaning to u restricted to omega or du by d nu the exter external normal derivative restricted to omega etc and that is called trace theory. So, uh, you, we will mostly deal with the m equals 1 because the exposition is simple and uh, we will present the results in the simplest of cases, but a very comprehensive reference for this is Adams Sobolev spaces. academic press, but of course, I must warn you or Mazja also sober the spaces. I think this is Springer. These are very difficult books to read, but anyway, these are where you will find some encyclopedia like an encyclopedia all kinds of results connected to all these spaces. But we will give a fairly self-contained and simple treatment which will suffice for most of the uh, applications. So, that is what we plan to do. So, this is the roadmap we are going to follow in this chapter and we will execute them one by one. Okay.